Have you ever been so desperate for something that without it you feel your world is crashing down? A state of despair, one in which you're desperate because all hope is gone. And until this that you're longing for is provided, life does not make sense. How much as Christians have we ever been so desperate for the Lord that we can do whatever it takes to have his radiance in us, to have his glory shine through us, to have undoubtable relationship with him, a state where we don't care of anything else except his presence in our lives fearless of danger and ready to even go to levels where we become irrecoverable to self but lost in him we really need to shift now from just hungering for him to being desperate for him oh we miss it jesus had withdrawn to the region of tyre and sidon on the mediterranean coast as far as we know, this was the only time during his public ministry that he was outside Jewish territory. He and Phoenicia, a Canaanite woman, asked him to heal her daughter who was demon-possessed. It is important to realize that this woman was not Jewish, but a Gentile. She was descended from the Canaanites, an immoral race which God had marked for extinction. Through Israel's disobedience, some had survived the invasion of Canaan under Joshua. And this woman was a descendant of the survivors. As a Gentile, she did not enjoy the privileges of God's chosen earthly people. She was an alien, having no hope, and positionally she had no claim on God or the Messiah. <clears throat> Speaking to Jesus, she addressed him as the Lord, the son of David, a title which the Jews used in speaking of the Messiah. Although Jesus was the son of David, a Gentile had no right to approach him on that basis. That is why he did not answer her at first. His disciples came and urged him to send her away. To them, she was a nuisance. To him, she was a welcome example of faith and a vessel in which his grace would shine. But first he must prove and educate her faith. He reminded her that his mission was to the lordship of the house of Israel and not the Gentiles, and certainly not to Canaanites. She was undismayed by this apparent refusal, dropping the title, Son of David, she worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. If she couldn't come to him as a Jew to help, she worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. If she couldn't come to him as a Jew to her Messiah, she would come as a creature to her creator. To further probe the reality of her faith, Jesus told her that it was not good for him to turn aside from feeding the Jewish children in order to give bread to Gentile dogs. If this sounds harsh to you, you should remember that like the surgeon's blood, it was not intended to hurt but to heal. So Jesus said these words never to hurt but actually to heal. She was a Gentile. The Jews looked upon the Gentiles scavenger dogs prowling the streets for scraps of food however jesus here used the words for a little pet dogs the question was will she acknowledge her unworthiness to receive the list of his mercies her reply was magnificent she agreed with his description completely taking the place of unworthy Gentile. 
she cast herself on his mercy, love, and grace. She said in effect, you are right. I am only one of the little dogs under the table. But I notice that crumbs sometimes fall from the table to the floor. Won't you let me have some of those crumbs? I am not worthy that you should heal my daughter. But I beseech you to do it for one of your undeserving creatures. Jesus commended her for her great faith. While the unbelieving children had no hunger for the bread, here was a self-confessed little dog crying out for that blessing and for that bread. Faith was rewarded. Her daughter was healed instantly. The fact that our Lord healed this gentle daughter at a distance suggests his present ministry at God's right hand. Bestowing spiritual healing on Gentiles during this age when his ancient people are set aside nationally. She humbled herself to have the crumbs, the leftovers, as long as it can still be the portion of what was on the master's table. You will want to have everything from Jesus, no matter what it is. As long as it is from him, I do not care. But as long as you have a desperate heart, whatever Jesus offers is as precious as silver, as pure and as expensive as gold. Her desperate heart brought deliverance to her daughter. What is that that you need deliverance in? This is the time to cry out. And I declare that may the Lord grant you all that you are desperate for. Oh, how I am desperate for his presence. To talk daily at a table with the angels. To have a conversation. Man to man with Jesus. In his nature of being a hundred percent man. And a hundred percent God. To feast at his table. And to continue distributing his food to the ends of the earth. There could be those things that you are going through right now. Faith. It is only through faith. It is only by faith. That we can please God. By faith, miracles happen. Through faith, you can be healed. The level of this woman's desperacy reflected the measure of faith that she carried. That even if she was to be called a dog, which is sinful, she could not allow that to deter her desire and longing and desperacy for a miracle. And not only for her, but for her daughter. Today, her name and her testimony remains in scripture to be remembered and spoken of by many. Just like I'm speaking about her today because of her faith. There were so many people in the time of Jesus. There were so many people who saw Jesus, who attended the meetings of Jesus. But their names are never written in scripture. Their testimonies are never written in scripture. Their incidences were never written in scripture and are not in scripture up to this day. But this woman is remembered for her faith. Faith makes you to be remembered. Faith causes you to do things that can be remembered. And faith brings deliverance on that ailment, on that curse, on that sickness that you have been suffering in for a very long time. So right now I just want to urge you to 
Raise your faith. The word of God declares that though your faith is as small as a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be moved, and that mountain will be moved from its location to a location that you will command it to go. And I want to say to you tonight that though your faith is as small as a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to that sickness, you will say to cancer, you will say to tumor, you will say to asthma, you will say to arthritis, you will say to whatever sickness and disease or blood pressure or whatever leukemia, whatever it is, to be moved out of your body to a direction that you will command it to go. I urge you to raise your faith tonight and put your faith in action because faith without action is dead. It does nothing. It will never heal. It will never transform. It will never cause mountains to move. Not alone mountains. It will never cause even this little stone that you can ever know to move. The smallest thing. But faith that has been put into action can move the biggest of mountains that you have ever known can stop the biggest of wars that you have ever experienced put your faith into action today with an expectation for a miracle for revival for change and for transformation and your life will never be the same so by faith, I declare right now that be healed in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every works of the devil, every attacks that the devil has brought against your health. Today, in the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed. Every demon that has been oppressing you, I command it to be gone out of your body now in Jesus' name. I command you to be whole and to be healed because by his stripes you are healed right now in the name of jesus amen